Four Nancy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. And Hello, Kyle Pilkington. Steve, you got any other toilet related <laughs> anecdotes? Rick, my life is just full of toilet trauma. Yeah. And I, Carl, you may not realise this, but uh, a while back I used to host, this is bizarre, I used to host a radio show on the BBC World Service, right? Now, you, if you want someone who's, who's the voice of integrity, the voice of intelligence, the voice of a nation, you're going to come to me. That's yeah. obvious. And I was broadcasting to, now they've got listeners of something like 50, 60 million people around the world. It's mental, the listenership of the World Service. And I used to host this show with someone. It's a big else. place, Steve. The world? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And uh, anyway, so I had to I had to be into uh, Bush House, where they broadcast from, 10 o'clock every Friday morning to broadcast around the world to 50 million people, right? And one week, uh, I just went to the toilet in my house, right? Everyone had left. I got there a bit late. I got up a bit late. Already against me. The clock was already against me. Had to be there at 10 o'clock, broadcast around the world. And we got two toilets in our house, downstairs one, right? And the door had already been a bit dodgy. It was one of those doors where you had to give it a bit of a kick because you went in. It was, getting a bit, it was getting a bit tight. I don't know what, the wood was expanding or something. You know, I'm in there. And same thing again happens, no toilet paper. I think, oh, God, I'm going to have to somehow kind of make it up. Why don't you check first? I normally do, Rick. I normally do. It's just on a certain occasions when I'm bleary-eyed or something, I just, I forget, or occasionally I forget. Normally I do check. Right. And um, you've got to bear in mind that it's not like this is happening every week. This is over the course of many years that sure. these incidents have acc- accumulated. So um, You've condensed know, them. For, for the purposes of this anecdote. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And... Sure. Um, Great, you're, you're, you're just brilliant to keep the, keeping the pace up of an anecdote there. Rick. You've just drawn in. I don't know where I am now. Anyway, oh, I know, I know where I'm. I'm trapped in a toilet with no toilet paper. Yeah. That's where I am. And I'm thinking maybe I peel off some of the wallpaper, you know, things like that. But there's nothing I can do. I got to go upstairs. Yes, well, exactly. But I got to go upstairs and find toilet a note. paper. Was there any? <laughs> there wasn't. Sorry. There wasn't. Oh. I got to go upstairs and maybe find a notepad or something like that. Oh. And uh, so I try the door. Right, the door's wedged. And I'm pulling on the door and I can't. Get the door open. It's just like it won't come open, and it's already. And I knew it was going to come to this at some point. Like this is like the clock's ticking. I'm trying to pull the door open. Tries to run my ankles again, and I'm thinking, well, what I could do is I could open the window, I suppose, and like try and climb out, but not really because I got the trousers on the ankles. And that's or if it was really raining, good. just stick your ass out. <laughs> two birds with one stone. Sadly, it was a beautiful day, Rick. It's, I call it the World Bee Day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so what I'm thinking is, well, wonder. I got my mobile phone in there, luckily, because it's in my pocket. I'm thinking, well, maybe I could phone. I was seriously Kleenex. Thinking, maybe I'll phone. <laughs> The fire brigade. <laughs> By this point, and it just dried. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hadn't. It was. Hold it was, on. Was that little puppy not around? Because <laughs> sometimes you can call that. It's got a little bit wrapped round it. Listen. Or just use the puppy issue. itself. There's 50 million people around the world going yeah. to hear my voice in like yeah. 30 minutes. Exactly. And Where's Steve? He's not lugged in the toilet again, is he? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. So um. So, so I'm thinking about phoning the fire brigade, and I'm thinking, sure. like, if I do that, it's gonna, you know it's going to be the first call that goes straight on the speakerphone yeah. for like the entire fire brigade service everywhere. With a butch hero carrying you down over his shoulders with your trousers around your ankles. <laughs> exactly. Can I just not pull him up? No, you've got to be learned a total lesson. Yeah. But I imagine the idea of a phone up and going, uh, hello there, I'm, uh, yeah, a bit of, I'm trapped in a room in my house. Oh yeah, which one is it? Oh, That's I quite don't need small. to know. It's quite <laughs> small. <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah. It's not the toilet, is it? Because we don't want to come up and rescue someone who, who's trapped in the toilet. Which no. service do you require? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> so, um, so I, I think I can't find the fire brigade. The clock's ticking. So then I think I think one of my housemates is still in the house, but still asleep. So I phone the house number. Right, phone rings and rings and rings for ages, and eventually he answers the phone. <laughs> right, gets out of bed, answers the phone. Yeah, hi, it's Steve. All right, what's wrong? I'm what are you downstairs. doing? What are you doing? <laughs> All right, yeah. Just, oh, I didn't wait. No, no. What are you doing? Ah, oh, just in the I'm toilet. Just downstairs in the toilet. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Ah, oh, well, I've finished what I'm. Have, have you got any <laughs> toilet paper? Any bog roll? Yeah. So he had to um, kind of scrape together a few bits of paper, you know, and sort of tin foil or whatever he could find yeah. in the house. A right? cactus. Come down oh no! Pass it th- underneath the door, right? And now I to, then he, I said, "Can you move away from the door while I? Because I don't want you to hear me as I'm, you know, wiping the." And so you he didn't did say it. that. Yeah, well, I didn't want him to, you know, that's, what, that's what, embarrassing. Sorry, what, what that's you, embarrassing. What were you yeah, wiping yes. with? Not, tumbleweed? What do you mean? What no, noise? I know what you mean. Yeah. No, exactly. Right. So, um, so then I say, right, can you smash Why was he seat? hovering? <laughs> Why didn't he want to walk away? <laughs> will you keep your head, what was it, <laughs> outside with a glass to his ear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thankfully, there was, there, was, there was a window in the door, but it was frosted glass. Right. You could just see my, my semi-naked body moving around. And, um... So eventually I said to him, look, listen, I'm going to need you to sort of kick the door in. He said, well, I don't want to kick the door in because you're going to have to pay for it, aren't we? I go, yeah, but I've got to go to the World Service. I got, to... Well, yeah. And he was a lovely man. He's the weakest man 
you've ever you've ever come across. It's like you, if there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. So he's smashing against. This the door. sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there, and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper, and you go, "Oh, you've broken the door down, and there I am naked." <laughs> <laughs> Again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. Like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you've just got to make it slightly more CD. Oh, <laughs> uh, so did he, did, did he get it down? He did it, yeah, and I got to the World Service with, like, minutes to spare. Oh. And uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the you world. Yeah. Did they understand? I well, think what, so. What, I mean, is that a bit of a problem when you're on the World Service, like, thinking of things that everyone can understand? Yes. Because you can't it's a bit like when talking yeah. to you, Carl. Yeah, exactly, Carl. I think you're on thin ice there, <laughs> worrying about people understanding what you're saying. No, but you can't talk about stuff that's on the telly and that, because some people will say, well, we haven't even got a telly here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Play a record. Nirvana, all apologies on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilton. And, well, Steve, I met up with. I know it's forbidden, usually. Mm, I don't know why uh, you Let me just expl- it. explain to the uh, listener. Um, me and Steve have got a little bit of a pact. We're not allowed to talk to Carl during the week because he comes out with too much dynamite and we want it to be fresh and it's, it's just unfair. And if he sees us laughing, he, he clams up a little bit because he, he knows something's wrong with his head. So, um, I was in a pub, and uh, Carl called, he returned a call, I'd called you earlier, and I said, oh, I'm just across the road, right, come over, and uh, he came over, and we had a conversation, and uh, I kept saying, no, save it, and I can't remember half the things he was saying, but I do remember one thing he said, he said that the human eye never grows, it's the, he, said, he said, unlike your ears and nose that keeps growing all your life, he says the human eye never grows. Now, there's a little bit of... He says, now you look at a baby, it's got big eyes. It's got the same size eyes as it will have. When, when, when a never... baby's born, everyone always goes, oh, look at its eyes, don't they? Because that's, like, the main feature. Yes. They're quite big. They <laughs> don't grow, they don't get any smaller, they stay the same size. What, you mean once you become an adult, you've the same size no. eyes? as soon as you come out of the womb, <laughs> your eyes, the size they are, as a little baby... They stay the same size. And so you the sockets. And I said, I pointed out to him, right, you know, I said, if that was true, Steve Merchant, when he was a baby, with these eyes he's got now, would have looked like a hammerhead shark. All right, calm down. <laughs> you don't want to go <laughs> lay into the eyes. Do you know what I mean? Just to prove my point. I didn't laugh when Good. he said that. Respect. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Well, I... I've got the eyes of the windows of the soul. <laughs> and mine are, they happen to be enormous plate glass windows. Glass windows. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but no, no, they're so beautiful. Many people find them beautiful. Yeah, they're they're great. Yeah, many people find them beautiful. Um, But, uh, do you know they don't have kneecaps either? My eyes or? What? Babies. (laughs) When when they're born, they they don't get kneecaps until they're about two. (laughs) They don't get kneecaps? Is that true? Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, but it's isn't it like a isn't it a little bone in it part of the? Well, the, no, but all the, 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 you've got lots more lot more bones when you're born. Than yeah, you got three hundred three hundred when you're born, then two hundred and five when you're an adult. Yeah, they all fuse, don't they? Do they? The head's got to be all soft to come out. Right. Um, as we said earlier, you know. I would know. I'm a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So God. what did you say when he said about my eyes being huge? Okay, it? get off it. That, so that isn't nice, considering yeah. he's not here. Yeah, so I wait until he's there when I slug him off. Yeah, very well. No, nice one, Carl. You're an honourable man. <laughs> oh, well, there's... I know, you see, the thing is, right, that made me think that it might be a little bit of truth in this. There is, as well, is the, the, the ear thing. <laughs> Have you seen that with old That's men who have yeah. really long ears? Yeah. And big noses. Yeah. yeah you mean do, that, they, do they eat buns and uh, walk around in the jungle, these, these old men? You mean that the ears and the nose carry on growing? Yeah, yeah they do, that's true. That's true, it's cartilage. Yeah, but not like, it's not like sort of Pinocchio. No, no, after you're dead. You leave a body lying around, he's got a huge elephant really? hug. Really? left him long enough? Four foot nose, that's Incredible. what, yeah. Um, that's no, remarkable. But, but they see that it's about the focal um, uh, length in, in your eye, you see, because it's, it's like a big lens. So it would make sense that, that they couldn't change that much. Because mm. um, an owl, do you know why an owl turns its head round? Sort of like 180 degrees. No, because it can't move its eyes. Because the eyes take up the whole. It's the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. The eyes take up the whole of its skull. Really? That, yeah, yeah, and it has to move its. Yeah. Has it got a brain in there as well? It's got a brain in there yeah, above the eye. Yeah. When I say the whole of the skull. I'm, Quite. Yeah. There's yeah. also some space for the brain. What I meant is the the 
the, the two diameters of the eye is the is the diameter of the. You've lost the me there on, with diameters. And you didn't like maths, did you? Never, don't like maths. Never understood it. Couldn't no. get to grips with maths. I don't know about you, Carl. Did you do maths, maths, Carl? <laughs> now, how did you do in your exams on the maths? <laughs> did you do that? Which I bet yours was rather like my theory, which is why you need to figure it all out when you've got a calculator. Exactly. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. You're and right. I agree. Well, let's play a record, and afterwards I'm going to be testing you on your homework this week, Carl. Mm. Um, could we do uh, White Van Man first? We could do, oh, just to, you no, know, they've got no, to know what, to what they're people. dealing with, yeah. Um, Carl's homework was to read all about, um, as you know, Shea Guevara. Absolutely. Uh, uh, last week, he did well on Rasputin, didn't he? Did very well on Rasputin. Yeah, uh, and with flying marks there. Uh, so, uh, um, let's, let's have a bit of Wu-Tang, shall we? Then let's have White yeah. Van oh. Van. Yeah. White Van Carl. No. Yeah. Don't erase none of that good shit. Wu-Tang Clown there, Steve. XFM 104.9, and this is Vase with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Now, I just, uh, remind him someone else, um, Carl's in the week. I know it's forbidden to talk to him, but we're, we're, I'll tell you this. He was talking, he was very excited about the Friends Reunited. He was a bit nervous at first, wasn't he, last week? But then he was really getting into it. Um, and, uh, in the pub he was talking to about the people, and he said, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd never go on a reunion, though. So I'd never, never do that. What, a school reunion? Yeah, and he wouldn't want to see anyone. And I went, well, I said, I said, wouldn't you want to see those two lads with the big heads and the webbed hands? Oh, yeah, these were people you went to school with, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock about with them. They were in the class. What were they called? Ah, uh, freaks. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And uh, he said, no, I wouldn't want to see them. He said, because what could you say? Oh, you haven't changed much. Right. Mm. And he went, he said, and they wouldn't go anyway, would they? I said, why? He went, well, they didn't have any friends. Right. And I said, well... Weren't they friends with each other? And he went, no, that would have been too obvious. <laughs> like, they fast <laughs> and went, no, I know it's tempting, but let's not. Everyone would think that's just what we were going to do. <laughs> let's yeah. not do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they didn't even hang around with each other? No. See, I must say, in my, in my head, I've got something like, it's like a, some sort of extra thing from Blake 7, that they're like some sort of, you know, lagoon monster. But they just had slightly oversized heads, did they? See, does your head grow? Your hmm. eyes don't, does your head? Because maybe they've got to a point now that it's all sort of caught up with each other. <laughs> Go on. Well, at the time, the, the eyes were very small and the head was huge. <laughs> uh, Just the very big head. And yeah. the, I mean, the fingers aren't going to change, you know, that's not... They had not webbed funny. fingers? It was like the penguin in Batman. <laughs> really? Are you sure? No, honestly. Are you sure they weren't wearing mittens? No, seriously. <laughs> yeah, they were, it wasn't home economics. They weren't getting some out of the oven, a very hot dish, were they? Every time you saw them. <laughs> But why were there two, but they weren't related and they weren't friends? I don't know. I suppose it's like asthma and that, isn't it? Some kids have it. <laughs> and, and it just was a coincidence. Yeah, but asthma's quite a common thing. Webbed hands, Carl. Yeah. I don't know. You don't think of it, do you, when you're a kid? You just sort of... Oh, when, yeah, you, when you first see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There goes the frog, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Carl, look, let's have, uh, <laughs> let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. <laughs> uh, For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, The Sun, as you may know, has a <laughs> section called White Van Man where uh, a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be funny if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions, it's just your views, really, on these big, these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics. and for he. What? He was, a ski, he was a skier, right. and he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what, I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> why? Because all you do is balance. But imagine, it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like, going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have but to... It's not, it's not going to help you, is No, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it, with skiing? Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but it'd be like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not, it's not going <laughs> to help them. You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you could try I, could, and you hold could I say? Could I say the, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking? That's his defense, probably the, it, it, it wasn't. It probably wasn't jacking up H or you know dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> Doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you pissed out your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not going to help me out. But it is, isn't it? Because, uh, performance enhancing drugs oh, no, do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah. I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, now, keep concentrating. 
Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. For Runners. Example, runners, yeah. They're, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance by yeah. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff. Right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right. So again, he, was, he wasn't on a bomb before. You? What? Why would that help you when you all you've got to do is balance on skis? <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a lot to do with you know your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like if you, if, you, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, okay. do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I ate this bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Uh, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying you know she's daft and that, but <laughs> don't make you. She's. <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, you know, right. she's all right. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Would you uh, agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer. He doesn't need to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like you know, all right. I only got an E in history, sure. but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So good luck to him, and he's done well out of it. And it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember though um, when I was, when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station. And he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then. But he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you <laughs> sort of go, sure, I went to school. It's not the one with the big head. Yeah. <laughs> but I do recognise him. Then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so thank close God to for your another. girlfriend. Does she, yeah. does she get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? <laughs> she does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what not. about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can I, claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Because <laughs> um, you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep, if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. <laughs> if you have a day off, you just feel worse. You'll mope about at home. doesn't do you any good. What about, wh where do you draw the line there? What if you, say, lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends if, if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at <laughs> work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this. It's the one mm. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And, you know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally... Uh, like, see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Okay, and uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, they had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's well, what he wanted to That is now it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yes. the best. So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. It doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And... It's just annoyed me now. I d it's Who's annoyed you? Th this, th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I th I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You I think you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Shall I, shall I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it later. It's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. Athlete, West Side. I still like that one. It's a good track. Yeah, good I was track. worried that it was a bit novelty it would go off very quickly. But it's good. No, really it's, it's not bad at all. On right. XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Bays with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, 
I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the internet of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, if I mean, it came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what was the matter? Well, if she, there was people shooting at us and everything that was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. There was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's well, this gun's not clean? I just cleaned the gun and it was fine. And now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, and the boots, like, they were, they were oh, shiny. Well, he's got to do that. It's more his neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know, know what the ins and outs of it are, but... Um, uh, is it, what you've got to do is make sure you know what you're going into. That's what I do. You've got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, the, like, the Falklands or, you know, the Gobs, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? And you look like, yes, it will be horrible. <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death. And I go, right, I'm not going to go. And they go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. should be fine, yeah. Just like that. Uh, does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone. <laughs> exactly. My brother, my brother went into the army, right, because um, he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. And then, oh. so then, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight, 81. Eight, right? And he joined back in like 81 or something. And uh, he, 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 I don't know, he was in older shot or something. Oh, yeah. And uh, he wrote back to my mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> well, bad time to join, that's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's like, dear dad, yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the dole, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway, and, uh, go on. my mum called up, spoke to the sh- sergeant and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck and he, he, he the sergeant said to my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, it's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now, listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean you're the you're sergeant. Right. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's got, ludicrous! Got, I love it, that. Oh, we went over the top. No, in. I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in order. Because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Now, you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. Your excuse. You're going to have to do, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if, if he was needed, he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no. But were the, the other army, soldiers think, going around just going, wah? <laughs> Bilkington. <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> What? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've Honest made that Honest to God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. First of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, going, let him up, and he goes, oh, God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, the, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did, was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> so let him off this time. Can he... T- yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think 
You're a certain type of person. It's good, it's good for it you. It didn't straight in me, man, did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone no, behind but their he was, back. It's yeah. really weird. It's like back then, he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he I, hasn't I, got I, the I seriously haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so so it always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the... Uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Because it's just too stressful. Hides, <laughs> <laughs> main offender, XFM 104.9. Wow. It's that time in the show where I test Carl on his, uh... Homework. Yeah, for the week. History. The re-education of Carl Pilkington. As you know, we found out last week that he'd uh, taken one GCSE and he'd got an E, and it was history. Do you know, Steve, I haven't told you this, went shopping on Sunday, buy some new jeans. It's in a shop, saw an old lad who I hadn't seen for about two and a half years. Went, you alright, mate? How are you doing? First thing he said, sorry to hear about your exam results. Oh, God. Had just, he listened to the show or someone had yeah, just told him? Yeah, he was on a train listening to it on the way to a football match or something. He knew that you were on the show, did he? He was yeah. a regular listener. First thing he said. Wow. So sorry about your exam results. Haven't people have been coming up to you in the station going, you yeah, right. you, do you want to talk about it or? God. I know. Well, well, you did take it pretty badly for a 29-year-old man. Just a bit of a shock because it annoyed me that. I it wasn't a shock. You no, knew you, you hadn't got any. No, I thought I'd have got a bit more than that. I wasn't expecting, you know... But you weren't, you didn't even think you took history, so that must have been a bonus. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend said. Yeah. So, well, but didn't yes she say something quite philosophical, which was like, you know, you didn't even have a knee this morning? Yeah, she said yesterday, you know, you, you didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. today. Exactly. Which was good. Yeah. Mm. But anyway. Anyway, okay then, well, you were tested on uh, Che Guevara. Right, Carl. We should just, hang on, we should just remind people what happened. Cause last this is a little series, you... I've got a lot of these little books, right, they're about, like, um, two and a half inches long by about, you know, two inches wide, those tiny little things you see in the, sort of, on the front count of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's, uh, The Life and Times, a series of all the great, all the greats in history. Uh, last week you read about Rasputin, you wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week... This book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same, I think, was it? Maybe the writing's Thick, so you're writing or something. Um... But, okay, Sha Che Guevara. Who was Che Guevara? Just, just, uh, now, you learnt to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me the week how you remembered to, to what his name was. Che is like Shake, and his, his surname is like Guitar. Right. Shavara. Okay. Um, but anyway, <laughs> right, um... Tell us what you know, and I'll, I'll, we'll ask. Right, first of all, um, his, his name isn't really Che. Right. It was something else, and Shay means buddy okay. in uh, wherever he's from uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right, so anyway, he was born, and he was. Uh, By the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now. This is all out of his own head. This is just... not pre planned notes. No, this is. this is. I mean, it's I know it helpful. sounds written, but he's just. Yeah. Right, here on we this. go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born. Um, he, he had bad asthma as a kid. Right. Which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then, and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days. The bad, the bad build-up of traffic and that. Well, they so did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was that was something I picked up early yeah. in yeah. the story. He uh, had asthma. Yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli. He wasn't a politician or anything, but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that and keeping up to date on yeah. what's going on yeah. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school. He was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, he learned really quick. He did, like, uh, six months' work in about three months. So he could have some time off school or something. Right. So he, he took that time off yeah. and went to travel South America with his mate okay. on a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he saw all this bad going on in the world. And he thought, oh, this, this is bad, this. You know, I, I could sure. do something here. I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he um, he said, what I'm going to do is uh, join a gang right. that sort of uh, is against the, uh, like the like the government. Yeah. Right. Right. 
I'm all right so far. Yeah. You're doing very well. Right, and and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, is a woman called Ilda, who he later married. All right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the, the like the head cheese of the gang. Right. Who wanted to change things. Okay. And um, so uh, she said like this is this is uh, I think his real name was Eng Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto. He does medicine. Should have him in our in our sort of army. Yeah. So when there's injuries and that, he can he can make people better. Yeah. So he said, yeah, all right then. So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. This no, no, no. Oh, no, sure, sure, sure. sure. You're, 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 you're condensing this. It's, not, it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go It feels like it. <laughs> You see, this is why I just wanted to ask you to ask me questions. Well, listen, let me cut to the, let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously, well, he made his name as part of the uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? About, uh, no, I don't. Okay. And, uh, obviously, so, uh, he, he was a uh, big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, where, in which country was he, um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. He shot him, and his last words before he died, right? The, the guy's there with the gun, huh. and he w he wasn't scared. He didn't. He wasn't like crying or anything. He said to the bloke with the gun, he said, "Go on, shoot me. Uh, be a man." Yeah. He said, yeah. And they shot him. And yeah. did did it tell you what happened to him after that? His dead body? No, but Suzanne was telling me about this the other night. She said there's more to it than that. They stuck it in a in a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet. feet and sent them to. The uh, no, 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 and that, because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to Ch to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried, so it just meant that he was. Yeah, even but that more wouldn't work anyway because if they did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you've got all these different graves... What, with different parts of his body? Oh, you've got a foot over there, and it's like, well, you know, oh, God. His head over there. Thanks for sure. what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, so, so, all in all, all so in all, essentially, what's your summary of Che? Yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. Um, well worth knowing about, and um, good bloke. Did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, interesting bloke. But um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara, um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the, the duty log. We love the complaints on the BBC duty log. And someone had written in because one of the Blue Peter presenters was wearing a Che Guevara T-shirt. And what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of... People can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing some... Well, listen, no, this was it? the thing. If you complain about the best one... I mean, there's been some amazing complaints. Oh, there's there. some great ones. The, the best one... My favourite my favorite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, which but there's lots of that. It's things like Esther was superb. <laughs> woman. <laughs> Call yeah. one. Woman called. Uh, there yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike T-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things that. Are. Yeah. But anyway, this was this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a T-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see uh, a presenter wearing uh, Che Guevara's face on a T-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that, who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl. Yeah. Who knows what they're going to say about this show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've been championing the work of uh, Communist Revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone. <laughs> so I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up for Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought he was even I brilliant. Right, I but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us, you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remember that Carl. information. Do you, I've got another. Yeah. I've got. I've got a few in the series. Can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. 1889 to 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know much about him? What What, what was the significance of that last date? Why did he? What What was that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. Which I'm interested in. So this, yeah. this will have stuff about Anderson shelters and that. <laughs> it might, it might not be covered in the Hitler um, biography, the Anderson shelter, but just I mean, check if there is a special Anderson uh, <laughs> chapter, Anderson <laughs> shelter chapter. 
I know, I'll look forward to the show. Yeah, be, yeah. Be interesting. Uh, powdered Egg is page four. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, right. we're going to play a hip hop. Yeah, we're g- it's time for a hip hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World? Is that yep. what, the whole world? Anyway, this is a track uh, from the big compilation, Outcast. Uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits. And uh, this is a good one. It's called Rosa Parks. Play it, Carl. <laughs> their greatest hits album uh, that's outcast and a track called rosa park like it like it yeah enjoy yeah it. now we just had a call uh from someone uh, impressed by carl and carl's very pleased because this guy has actually done a phd on Che guevara so in theory whatever subject he chose in theory he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field now hello are you there yeah i'm here hello what's your name my name's david david now, you, now where did you do your phd did at ucl at UCL, mild, mild college. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? And I his, thought he his... did really, really well. The only thing, I'd never heard those last words before. So, so Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although <laughs> you presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably, you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look, yeah. Did, did you know about Baby's Eyes? Sorry? Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as, uh, as gospel. Because it, it'll come out with something, you know, m- you know vaguely uh, intelligent and then say, did you know about baby's eyes don't grow? Um, any, uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any uh, thoughts, anything he missed there on the uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well and... Uh... I, I think I think he should be congratulated. What? Because no, Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history, and even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, "Why does anyone care about history? Why is it important?" What would you say to uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at who Che Guevara did influence and why he still influences people today. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, well, he knows that he influenced um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap. Uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara would cost him an awful lot of money. So he is trying to p- apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, maybe you should think, like, why Rage Against the Machine have him on, on their T-shirts. Good point, oh. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the T-shirts, Carl? I, thought, I don't know. Maybe that's that was a design of the T-shirt. Maybe they wanted another T-shirt. Maybe, maybe they wanted Ronald any, McDonald. But didn't have any in. <laughs> sure. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there. Then. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Um, Dave, just, to, just before you go, do, do you think Carl would be an interesting subject for a PhD? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know, well, hopefully one day you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some uh, coursework. I do, yeah. Carl Pilkington, imagine that. Cheers, Dave. Imagine having an MA in Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, Cheers bye. bye. That's good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. So really? Yeah. yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, you have to be in the same room. They were really. too busy saying, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but M- Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, sure. let's not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not not Matty Matthews, says, not, not never, Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never be a high flyer. D- d- if she could see you now. That, she, what did she say? She, you'll never be a high she, flyer? She said that to me, mum and dad. On, really? On a parents' evening. <laughs> what did, and that what? was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> REM with Orange Crush on XFM 104.9. Well, I'm nearly through, only 20 minutes to go. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve and Carl. Carl, what did you point? What did you point to me then? Just then reminded me. Go on. O- Orange Crush. Did you know we were talking the other night about contraceptives? Uh, no, no, you said to me, uh, I've got to do lots of own work. You look up how they used in the olden days how they used to use elephant dung as a contraceptive. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, no, look at oh, you make you give me those things. I said, I don't know, was it they put, when you're running around with dung on the end of your knob, no woman really wants to go near it. Is that how it worked? And he went, come on, you give me things to do. If you've just written a PhD on how to use elephant dung as a contraceptive, please get in touch. I'll oh, we'll give the number in a minute. It's not elephant, it was crocodile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? But, um, yeah, orange Sorry, crush. no, you can't, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Back. Ow. What do you mean? It was crocodile dung. What, how did they use crocodile dung as a contraceptive? I don't know. Right, go on, Orange Crush, yeah. So Orange Crush, um, what it was, I, t- I was trying to look up that, 
that thing about um, crocodile stuff, mm. using it. And um, I came up with another one saying that they used to use a lemon, sort of shaped right, and the um, put it put it on, and the citric so the um, citric acid citric acid in it kill the would kill the sperm. Right. So they would sorry they would wear the lemon on the end of the knob. Was that whilst... erotic? It works. At least not try anything, Carl, mate. It still works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If the ladies like that. I mean, does it act, could it be anything? Could it be like, a, you know, a melon? Kumquat? Yeah, maybe. In my in my case. What's those hairy ones? Yeah. Anyway, uh, it just reminded me when orange, orange crush. Well, thanks very much for that, Carl. It's, uh, and that, I didn't even ask him to no, 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 research no, no, that. No, no. He just... So orange crush reminded you of the lemon contraceptive? Mm. Okay. Johnny Good. Do you I could do? use it as a little lemon squeezer, couldn't you? It could be like a novelty lemon squeezer. You just stand in the kitchen, <laughs> and then when someone wants to just come along and go, yeah. <laughs> on the end of your... Did yeah. you make this uh, lemonade yourself? Uh, yes, I, I did. did. It tastes funny. <laughs> it tastes funny. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Anyway. Do you, do you, would you... Carl, this is a quick question to you. Would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? <laughs> is that a concern for you, do you think? No. Not, not a problem for you? Well, not if they're not if they're small and humble, I would. That's what I'm hoping. That's what fingers crossed. If they were small and <laughs> humble, then I'd I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God. But I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous and with like, like quite rocky with snow on top, <laughs> exactly. Then I'd go, hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now exactly, it, it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's d- who has who has done that? I'll Who's give you a clue. One more time. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. Shakira. It's a lyric it's that taking the nation by with. storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got another... It's very much like... It sounds a bit like uh, Men at Work, Down Under. Yeah, it's got the pan pipe. Is this uh, What's-It's-Kid? Who? Um, Julio Inglesius. No, it's Shakira. Consequently, uh, the word Shakira there being mentioned. I haven't heard of him. Okay. She's a big Latin star, apparently. Big Latin American star. Uh. And uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Which is a concern, it was always a concern. Definitely. I see, I see the number of times she's woken up, and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little a little Sherpa. She goes, what are you doing? And they go, we're just trying oh. to climb this map. Look again. Oh, sorry, love. Oh, it's your tits, I didn't realise. Oh, it's your tits, we thought we were in... I can't K2. leave it. I can't... Well, can we camp here? You can't camp on my tits for the night, no. Well, why are you climbing them? Well, I Because they confused. were there. Well, they're small and humble. What are you, mental? Look <laughs> at <laughs> Carl. I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, when you sort of, uh, uh, you go t- t- to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people? That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when, like, a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing um, Ash, just the, our producers uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing him through the VC. He's not a midget, we should make that. No, he's not a little midget, he's not tall. But um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> they just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> Do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. <laughs> do you go up to people? Do you go up to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. Well, Tell what this story. Well, um... Your dad, father was a taxi driver? My dad used to, He had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then. They don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't, they don't <laughs> have do loads of, of stuff. Sure. But, um, it, one, at one point, he had a black cab. I, mean, I used to, uh... Used to go with him. Used to get, a, like, a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. And sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And, um... Anyway, we got this call. And, uh... Like, the guy on the end of the radio said, Oh, you've, you've got, uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you? So he said, yeah. So it's just like, you know, we've got a pick up at uh, number 11 Village Lane or whatever. And he said, all right. And it was this woman. It was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow. The Elephant Woman? Yeah, it looked like... <laughs> it, it, looked, it, looked like it was really oh. strange because I was in the front of the cab and um, when you're a kid, you, if you if something looks odd, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, it'll be all right. And we're, we're driving towards her. Lucky, oh, don't worry, son, I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I'll just throw one down the street if it's it, it, right after You're it. being mean, right? How, old, old, was, how old were you, 18? No, I was, I was about 12 or sure. something like that. 11, 12. Hmm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like she, she she was holding like a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> right. And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. 
And uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you turn into stone. Well, <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the dri- driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of having, having a look, trying to work out. And I really, I mean, he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> It was that. It was that weird. <laughs> oh God! So I'm not sure you're from Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog boys walking yeah, around the Lord of the Rings. That, that got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah. And you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this sort is not of what is this, this is not place? The place you grew up. This yeah. Is mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and you go look symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, mustn't it? Because, again, do you know I've said to you before, years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good-looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now, back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the fact it. that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your heads yeah. to grow. No, but if, if she I... must have been really stressed to have a head like <laughs> yeah, yeah. She what was pretty, yeah, was she an accountant or something? Mm. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? But what? But what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going? By she, the way, she couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. <laughs> I think she, got... <laughs> she was she was going to like to a the fair. <laughs> Seriously, honest to God. <laughs> On my mum's life, she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals. They don't judge you, do they? She's not she an was animal. animal. She's a human being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she's... You know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> that's... Look, so listen. So this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? <laughs> what, yeah. to is find her true? husband? Is it... <laughs> Is this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm, not, I'm not taking the mickey because it must be so, really bad for of you. Of course it but is. Carl, 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 oh, I a... I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. I was going on about that. To think that she... I mean, she's probably not alive now. But to <laughs> think... But what you're saying, you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The I think you're right. Carl, you I just, just, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr- father where to drive it? Did she ever get another note? Did she point home? with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right, this has got silly. Pick your song. But <laughs> and also, finally, it? where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village, a little small village. Right. Um, just heading out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and now <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please <laughs> enter at your peril. Should it give me a shiny shilling? Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late. We've been just, uh, you know, rapping with uh, Carl P here, and this is I Need Direction. Teenage Fan Club. Oh, they're a good band. They are they? a good band. XFM 104.9. Um, so, well, we're, we're nearly there. So, will your girlfriend be proud of you now? You performed a PhD graduate there. It's a bit annoying because she's not in London today. She's in Sunderland or something, or Newcastle. Right. Working. So, she won't know what the your greatest triumph. She, she, she saw last week's and you got an E in history, and now this week you, cu- you come through yeah. with some great praise that Miss, Mrs. Matthews never you know, laid upon Even you, did she? Well. No, just said you won't be a high flyer. Hey? You've shown them, haven't you? You never know. I mean, I had mates who, um, <laughs> like, you know, my mate Colin Makin, who sure. did the disco with me. Pilkins making music, yeah. Pilkins making music. Yeah. He was dead brainy. I don't, I don't think he's up to much these days. Sure. Just, you just, can't plan it. Yeah. Just goes yeah. to show. Well, I mean, you can do a certain amount of planning. You can do. I mean, driving a tank down to the shops with some fags <laughs> yeah. never going to mean you're a high flyer. You and that, that that woman who you picked up in your black cab, she's in a circus now and yeah, she can happy. fly, which is good. Am I confusing that with a film? You went to see a film this week, didn't you? Mm. What, what did you see? see? Um, the um, Monsters Inc. Oh did yeah. Did you have a little argument? What was the argument about? Did you have an argument with your girlfriend or something? Because about well, the history thing took over last weekend. To be honest, when you found out my results. <laughs> that was like the talking topic of most of the weekend. And <laughs> why? What did she say? You, know, you brought it on yourself. You know, why didn't you take it serious? You know, was she annoyed or upset? Well, she just sort of said, "You can learn. Look, you, you learned Rasputin. 
Mm. You know, if only you did You've that. You've done school, that. You've done Rasputin. You know what I mean? She said, you can do it if, if you're told to. She said, you know, it's only because Rick has told you to read the book that you're reading it. Mm. Does she, she think said, we're sort of like taskmasters? Does she think we bully well, you? Uh, nah, she knows it's just a laugh. Yeah. What did you, did you tell your uh, parents about your... No. Nope. No. Never? Because they, they never even questioned where my results were, so I don't want to tell them that, you know, I didn't get any. No. What, how did they do it at school? Didn't have them back then, did they? Right. Uh, <laughs> when was that, Carl? The, the middle, middle ages. ages. I don't know. I mean, like I say, back then it wasn't about getting results and that, was it? It was just about learning trades. Mm. I mean, my dad, right, he can, like, put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? <laughs> he's done that first of all. Right, so, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs. Yeah, he can do all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working, what should I do? Mm. And he'll say, like... Is that my brain surgeon? He'll yeah. say, oh, fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters, Inc.? What yeah. did you make of it? Um, so, all right, it's alright. It, it is a kid's film. It, it sort of annoyed Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having, like... <laughs> what, what gave that away, do you think? <laughs> Was it the songs? Was it the animation? <laughs> yeah, the fluffy was little it, things yeah. that squiggled round on the screen for yeah. an hour and a half. It is annoying because, like, there's kids everywhere and kids don't watch films, do they? No. Do you know what I mean? They're messing up. I don't know why they, they make, make kids films. And you can't, to be honest, it's mental. You can't concentrate properly when mm. you've got kids, you know, Screaming making noise training. around you and that. Yeah. So I'd say, my little review, wait until it comes out on DVD. Okay. <laughs> what a great review that would <laughs> really? be! Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Film 2002. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Ross going... Well, I don't want to give it away when it comes out on DVD. Yeah. Oh. No, but not giving it away. It's just that you can't watch it properly when there's kids screaming around you. Yeah. Sure. Do you know what I mean? What are you looking forward to this week? Are you going to go and see anything? Just been talking to Ricky now, because my missus is away. I'll probably uh, get out a DVD tonight. Yep. Rounders. Oh, right. Okay. I thought you might like that. And if like you can get, so, but I mean, if I can get you tickets, say, in the stores or in a box for the stage version of Midnight Express, would you be up for that? <laughs> it's on. It's on ice. I think it's the final year, it, isn't it's it? It's lovely. It's Midnight Express on ice. Yeah, and it's a musical as well. They're on roller skates. Do you have any dope under your jacket? No. Yeah. It's well they, it's, 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 it's great. John yeah. Hurt is actually in this version as well, yeah. which is fantastic. Who played the Elephant Man? So it's all comes. The universe all comes together. Have you ever seen the stage version of the Elephant Man? No. You'd love that. Yeah. Who's in that? I have seen a clip of it. Who plays him? Uh, I've, I've I think they got a real guy with actual with elephantitis. Right. Yeah. What are you finishing on? Uh, let's uh, have a final song for the ladies. It's from uh, the album "Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me" by The Cure, and it's the beautiful catch. See Goodbye. You next week. See you next week, everybody. Bye bye. Since you've been gone, by Rainbow. Since we've been gone, Steve. What's been going on, mate? Well, so much has happened, doesn't it, in the world, um, you know, politics and stuff. There's been an election and the like. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say producer, <laughs> funny, yeah. uh, Carl Pilkington. All right. Yeah, very good. We've been away for a while. I think uh, the last show we did was January 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed whatsoever. Nothing's been mended. Uh, I, I, I mean, I... Uh, I'm pretty sure I threw that away in the bin <laughs> yeah, before yeah. I went, before I left. Yeah, there are some of your uh, your old bacon rinds from that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The spare ribs on the floor. Yeah. yeah, nothing's changed at all. Oh, I, oh no, that's not true. Um, uh, the listenership has changed. It went down slightly, didn't it, on the last radio? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that is that what happened? Did it go down slightly, Carl? <laughs> uh, a little bit, I think. I don't think everyone gets new listeners because mm. I think... What happens is, the reason it goes down just very slightly each time is that their old listeners die. Yeah. Uh, you know, Definitely. old Cure fans dying of... Yeah, you know, smack addictions. Yeah, <laughs> gout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, I have haven't listened to this um, station for a year and a half, so it's, uh, that's increased by one, <laughs> yeah. which is uh, probably quite a high percentage. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, I, well, I, I mean, I suppose that, that my question, I suppose, to you, Rick, would be, you know, why now? Why, why have you come back now? You know, bored, you're a bit bored of sitting at home, <laughs> right, you know. Okay. Yeah. Because we're just here for six weeks. Six weeks. Um, well, we're standing in for Adam and Joe, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Hey, the tables have turned. I remember when they were standing in for us, but, uh... Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, the only reason I'm here is because, um, my, um, my housekeeper cleans, um, between one and three. Oh, right, that's um, a good idea. So I sort of get out of the house. And, uh... Are they, are they listening to XFM? Well, no, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I'm not made of money, Rick. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, if I can help out, you know, a, a young immigrant lady, then um, then I will do. And, and, and there are so many things I can do for her in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, but her, you know, picking up my old tea towels and stuff is uh, is ideal. So that's why I'm here. But I just, I'm, all I'm worried about is I think people kind of associate with the name Ricky Gervais. They associate a certain level of quality. You mm. know, your live stand-up DVDs, there's a level of quality. You've put a lot of work into them. You've honed mm. it. The TV work you've done, likewise. Mm. Should people expect the same from the radio show? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Th those things that, you know, you, you sit down, well, you know, we sit down, we write them for a long time, write them for a year maybe, then film them, and we worry about everything. This is, uh, I really, I'm not even sure I'm talking into the mic at the moment. <laughs> I, I was actually doodling as you saw there. Yeah. I'm eating the sandwiches as we speak. Yeah. You know, that, you know, if you, although we do like music, that is true. That's we absolutely should, right. Should we play some great I'm records? Play a great record now. You two, City of Blinding Light. I, I'll tell you what, I love you two now. Yeah. I honestly hated them, sort of everything from boy up to about, I think, um, Beautiful Day when that came out. I thought, oh, that's all right. I listened to the album, listened to this album. I love them now, Steve. It's a turnaround, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, I, I, that's, it's, it's that kind of um, musical insight that I'm looking for throughout this show. Really. <laughs> I it's sound like, like Dr. Dr. Fox then, didn't yeah. I? Turn out, some of your and wants and needs. Yeah. Dr. Fox. What's happened to him? Is he off air now? Because that's one of the reasons I put no effort into this radio show, because, uh, you know, uh, we, we go to the Golden Globes the same month, we do nothing at the Sony, and Dr. Fox actually said, that's because you're not very good. I like the fact that the uh, Dr. Fox criticisms really hit you quite hard. <laughs> You know, you really took I'm still talking off. about it a year <laughs> yeah, later. Exactly. You know, you've got to yeah. let it go, Rick. <laughs> yeah. You know, but then again, you know, he's a medical man, and yeah, well, uh, you know, you got you got to believe him. You've got to trust his opinion. You know, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I could have done without the rectal examination. I think he could have just said. <laughs> You're not very good. <laughs> exactly. Try and enunciate. No, I know what the problem is. Or oh, let's have a look down here. <laughs> exactly. Carl had to. You had to um, out, go, go, go to one of those um, well clinics, no, didn't I you? Didn't, no, I'm gone. Why? Because I'm, I'm not happy with it. What? I'm not happy with the whole. Well, it's just. Do people know what them places places are? We'll give you have a you, whole. Have you heard of them? Yeah, I've had one. Yeah, it? they they they, take, they check everything. Which you know, Suzanne, my girlfriend, was like, uh, you know, you're thirty odd now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when was the last time you went to the doctors? And I haven't been for ages because I don't. No, I never go. Doctors. I never go unless I think I'm, I'm honestly going to die there on an agony. Like, they can always find something. Jane made me go to one of those well things. Yeah, those yeah. boot things where they do that. It's yeah, a couple hundred quid and they give you a com complete head to toe, don't they? But but head, head to bottom <laughs> is what it is. The uh, they do the old uh, finger up the arse thing. Now, what is that testing for? Well, I like that he said it quietly, because he's on the radio. You not, you can't say arse. Yeah. I say it quietly. <laughs> say it quietly. Them. Yeah, yeah. Arse. Yeah, arse. That's what well, our mistake was, because we got um, a complaint up how, didn't we, for saying, and I'm talking about a male chicken here, which is a cock, as you know, yeah, and we yeah. said that word, right? So if we'd have gone, cock, <laughs> we'd have probably gotten away with it. You can get away with murder. If you just, yeah. If you just whisper it really So quietly. go on then, yeah, so. Go so, on then, so, yeah, yeah, no, I just, uh, <laughs> I just, I'm not going because I'm not having that done. I don't understand what what they're going to find up there. That's <laughs> <laughs> your what, head. <laughs> no, but why can't I just? I mean, it's the heart that I worry about the most. Do <laughs> you mean that in a, in a kind of romantic yeah. sense? No, no, I mean like you know. If they have to have a long finger, wouldn't they, to check <laughs> that out? They go, is something wrong with your left ventricle? Yeah. Now, this thing about this thing about the uh, doctors, they, they hold your testicles and they make you cough. Yeah, they don't hold the testicles anymore. They just put it sort of like by the side of them. And what's that testing for? I, I, I don't know. I think it's something to do with uh, if you've got something wrong with your your diaphragm or something like that, you can't you can't do it when they press there. I don't know. It, it shows you, them something. So you it's can't, not you it's can't. not doctors having a quick feel. Mm. But so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, that's good because do you remember when Carl said he's going to die of cancer, and I said why? He said I don't check me balls. I said why? He said I don't like the feel. <laughs> so they feel it for you. They they feel them for you, and you can you can just relax, shut your eyes, and think of England. Well, don't mess with them. What do you mean? You can do more damage messing about with them. Just leave them. And it's two anyway. You can afford to lose one. Yeah, I don't think that's the point. I think the the point is it it sort of s spreads, doesn't it? You know, it, it, you've got mm. to check the. No, I mean, I'm not saying you know if don't don't do it because they spend a lot of money saying to people you know have a quick feel if you've got the time, what have you. <laughs> but I, I'm not. I, I'm, I don't worry about it. Leave it. Leave it alone. <laughs> why? Out of interest, why do doctors stick fingers up your eyes? Check your prostate. Check your prostate. Yeah, because if it's swollen, it's 
it could, yeah, it, it could, you know, lead to all sorts of problems. Again, they're not having a laugh, Carl. <laughs> they're not going, hang on, look at this bald little wank fella. Well, there's no uh, nice I'll way. I feel his ball, stick a finger up his ass and send him home. <laughs> 300 quid, please, <laughs> on you go. What about me art? It's fine. And they're all, they're all laughing. Roger, Jeff, stand behind that two-way mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this? No, I'm uh, not going anyway. Sorry. Really? You're not going because you don't want- No, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't even matter. It's not the fact he's a stranger. If it was someone who I knew, it'd be just as bad. <laughs> That'd be worse! Imagine that! At a dinner party. Oh, God. Oh, look, hello. Hello, Roger and Selena. Um, do you mind? Roger, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> Would you allow any of the celebrity doctors to do it, though? Dr. Dre? Uh, Fox, Dr. Fox, any of those. Doctor Who. I just don't understand in this day and age. <laughs> Would you allow Christopher Eggleston to stick his <laughs> big right, northern finger up your? Do you want a song on anyway? <laughs> what? Uh, Beanie Siegel. I love this track. Oh, it's very urban for you, Rick. <laughs> Beanie Siegel. Feel it in the air. Beautiful track, isn't it? Well, it's wonderful. And I love your summer's day like this as well, Rick. It's the yeah. ideal choice. Well, yeah. that one. well, I'm a little bit worried that if there are any new listeners, very <laughs> unlikely, yeah. that, that, that they may, know, you know, be familiar with um, our work, but they might not know the, the wonderful little gem that we found just there, a little rough diamond in the in the mud. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just working here, just working away as a little producer, a little sound man, a wasn't drone. he? Yeah. And he was, uh, and we gave him his opportunity, didn't we? Mm. It's like Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah. And he, and he grasped that opportunity, didn't you, by the horns, and three years later, you're exactly where you started. <laughs> so, good work. Got Mondays off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe a, a, a useful way of introducing the mind of Carl Pilkington yeah. to um, our new you, you, audience. You use that term loosely. Yeah, when I say mind, I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought, what, 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 Look at his face! Oh. There is a website. Have you got that oh, website? Oh, there's address? a website that we just found. Right, Carl, what is the address? If you are unfamiliar with what Carl looks like- Please um, log on to this now. Log on to this website and stay tuned, but listen, log on to the website because you'll see Carl's face, you'll see some of his pearls of wisdom. Yeah, now what's it, what's the address, Carl? Uh, freewebs.com. www. Yeah, freewebs.com. Freewebs.com. Com, yeah, S forward slash. Yeah. Uh, the dash. K dash man forward slash the K man. It's okay. complicated. It is, yeah. Do it again. Say it again. But get a pencil right. now. They've all got a pencil now. Freewebs dot com. One word. Yeah. Slash the dash K dash man forward slash. Now, when you say dash, is it is it a dash or is it is, is it, it an middle, underscore? Is it, is it underscore? Is it is it in the middle of the word or is it hover in the middle of the word or is it the, is it the bottom? It's just just a line and that. Yeah, I know, but is it an underscore or is it a dash? Try both. <laughs> <laughs> he, he covered it down. Have a go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the oh. sort of level we're talking about. Well, already you've got some insight into the mind of Carl. Yeah, yourself. absolutely. Yeah. But I thought what, what we should do is we can hijack. <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine Bill Gates! <laughs> yeah, or a teacher <laughs> in an exam. Hot down both. <laughs> Uh, multiple choice! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, okay. But anyway, yeah, if, if you're a reader of the uh, Weekend Guardian, you'll know there's this thing called the Q&A, which they, they give to uh, celebrities and thinkers and the like. Mm. And basically it's a series of questions they pose to each pe people each week, and it's the same questions, and it gives a little insight into people's minds, the way mm. they think. What so particular, what thinker philosopher is in this week's? <laughs> I mean, it's the lead singer of Feeder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you're in good company, Carl. Um, no, I like Feeder. No, fine. I love Feeder. So, Carl, I'm just going to fire a couple of these questions at you. We maybe drop them in throughout the course of the show, just to try and get a sense of who you are. Um, so, here's the first uh, first question. All right, you got your thinking head on. Go on. <laughs> you wurzel. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, what for me or already? <laughs> no, Ronnie it. Corbett. No, no, but but what do you mean? Like, what will make me happy, or yeah. for everyone to be happy? No, what would make you happy? Maybe that is that. Maybe that's the answer. Y your idea of happiness is to everyone being happy. I don't know. What's your? What would make you totally? Unlikely. Like, I imagine it's a twenty-four-hour monkey channel <laughs> on like the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. A never-ending popsicle. Go on, go on. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've had it yet where I'm like really, really happy with it. Carl, I've never seen you really happy. No. No, but um, when have you been at your happiest? 
probably I like I like sort of fish fingers, potato cakes and beans for a for tea. Yeah. And you're then, not you're not in yeah. Right, well let's move on. We'll come back to that one. Let's <laughs> move not, on. I don't think you're aiming high enough for uh Well what would your answer be for that? When are you happy? What would make you happy? Um I, I wouldn't have the I'd have fish fingers, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't have the potato cakes. Yeah. I'd have fish fingers and beans. Sounds like a huge fan of the beans. <laughs> really? So yeah. your idea of um, perfect happiness is probably just fish fingers, is <laughs> just it? Just the fish fingers. Okay, good. All right, second question. What is your greatest fear, Carl? Mm. Going to the doctors. Okay. So, more, so, so presumably, uh, ill health and mortality. Uh, That's how you no, do it, you see. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't <laughs> any particular doctor? <laughs> I don't want to live forever either. No, I just want no. Beginnings. I just want to get to about eighty. 83, 84. <laughs> specific! <laughs> so specific! Yeah, okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh. Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill's pretty good. You like yeah, him? very good. He's Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's, he's not that good at that. I love the fact that even if the Nazis had won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose he's, <laughs> I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, here's one, here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh. That's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> depends, depends what for, do not it? Go on. Oh, I think something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <clears throat> they don't. They don't. They don't kill what, people what, now for uh, uh, parking illegally. But, but what sort of what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know. But what is that? What What are you talking about? Well, guillotine hanging. Uh, uh, hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh, can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just. It's not, all bad. Why? Mm -hmm. why, why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's, what's the point in keeping them, you know, people, people around? Well, what's the point in killing them? Just because it's like, right, that's that done, who's, who's next? <laughs> you know what, I mean? <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> Employ them on a radio show! Uh, yeah! Play a record, right, next Carl. question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back to the questions. Of, uh, what do you want? What have you got in here? Rick, I know you're a massive fan of the thorns. Yeah, that Maybe you're less familiar with the, uh, different elements of the thorns. Mm. Solo work. No, no. from Matthew Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Matthew Sweet, and a song called In My Time, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. That's great, that. Yeah, just asking Carl some of these uh, Q&A questions. This might be my idea of prep happiness, being in a room with Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just what I watch him, I just watch him look around, when you're talking, uh, he looks at you, and it's like, you know when the owners say, it's like the cat can understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's like, he's on the edge look. of that, he's yeah. on the edge of that, you think he can, and I know he understands the words, but I don't think he understands the full impact. He never, whenever you say something to him, it might be some, you know, a revelation or some. He always picks up on the wrong side. You go, well, that's not the important bit. Do you know what I mean? He always goes. It's a bit like having a fourteen-year-old French exchange student. Yeah. You know, their, yeah. their English is not amazing. They roughly yeah. understand you, but they're trying to piece together what you're saying. Exactly. But it, it's great. You see, um, the thing about Carl is, and d don't take this the wrong way. I like him st because he's stupid mm. in a way. <laughs> no, I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? But even though I think he is considered uh, stupid, some of the things he says, I think borders on the, I don't know what the PC term is, the retarded. <laughs> do you know what I mean, yeah. Carl? Anything in particular you're thinking of, though, Rick, when you think of well, the... Well, uh... um... He was talking to me the other day because I'm, I'm trying to write a show called Science, and he's sort of uh, going to help me out with some of the research, and I want to, I want him to do some on the DVD for it, right? And uh, he um, was talking about it, and uh, he was talking about, um, he says that uh, in the future they reckon we'll be able to soon. He said they'll be able to take us into space, and it's going to cost us 150,000 pounds. He said, what's the point? There's nothing up there. He said the, when they went up there, right? He said when Louis Armstrong went. <laughs> In 1966, <laughs> right? He said, 
it was nothing there. So there was him, a fella called Buzz, there was one and third bloke that didn't even get out of the spaceship. He said he went all that way, he didn't get out to stretch his legs. How good can it be? Forget it. That's him summing up yeah, space exploration. Don't, don't, don't you agree with that? What, what's the point in going up there? Because you're expanding- Are we talking about the finger in the arse again here? Or- it's space. Oh, so what, what is the point in going Because you're to expanding, you know, human endeavour, aren't you, in the human uh, understanding of the world and the universe. It's like, what else are we going to do as a civilization, as a, as a people, if we're not constantly searching and, you know, and, and reaching out into the far distance? But there's nothing there, though. I know some people you grew up with that haven't left their street, but that, that's not everyone. But what is it? What do you mean there's nothing there? What, what, what has got to be there for it to be a worthwhile? Like, just something. What, I mean, like, to be honest, What I would you be I happy with finding out on the moon? Video, just, just... Just something. I don't think they looked hard enough anyway when they got there because they seemed to get out, have a bit of a dance about, and then they came straight back. And I sort of think, you know, did they look properly? It's not a day trip, is it? But what, what I mean well, they is, took that car out there, didn't they, and drove around a bit? Yeah, but only a little bit. What I mean is, say if an alien landed in in Africa, there's not much there, so they'd go. Phew. What yeah, do you mean there's not much that. there? Well, it's a bit barren, isn't it? What, Africa? Just in general? Well, anywhere the, the, like that. The, desert or whatever, what I'm saying is, it's got, have a good look round. Probably the, uh, where all life came from and uh, probably half a million yeah, species of I, animals lived there. buildings and that and stuff. Oh, just buildings. Like, well, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, did they look properly? Or did they just land, get out, go, oh, a bit dusty or whatever, right, let's go back. I just think it's a bit pointless. Especially when we haven't done everything there is to do here. I Go mean, on. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is stuff <laughs> that needs sorting out. Well, there's, I know the place that there's there's no medical man has been <laughs> in this room. Yeah. There's there's a, there's, a, there's definitely an unexplored uh, cavern. <laughs> sitting right, in front. All right, Steve. Would you go to the moon if someone said there's a space? He doesn't march at a concert because he's scared his glasses to fall off. Of course he wouldn't go to the moon. That They'd spin him round in training, his glasses would come off, and that'd be it. He'd, yeah. he'd feel sick. My worry is I'm not sure I'd get- I'd have- because I- would I be able to wear him under the helmet? <laughs> Imagine him! Like, I went- I went paintballing once, and I had to wear the glasses <laughs> underneath the mask, and of course it was a bit hot weather, it was awful- all, it was steamed up in there. It's terrible, I couldn't see anything, I got shot straight away, I was out of the game, it was pointless. <laughs> you know, it cost me like eight quid. Yeah. You don't have to be that fit anyway, do you? You're only sort of sat there. Well, not, uh, well, yeah, but what, what are you talking about? Think of G-force alone and weightlessness. Of course you've got to be, what? Yeah. I what? think when you said think of G-force, he thought of G-4, the uh, <laughs> follow-up winners in Pop Idol. I can see it as his, as his eyes glaze over. A couple more quick questions for you, Carl, just to try and get inside your mind. Um, what do you, uh, what is your greatest regret? Uh, probably... I didn't do that well at school, did I? So I'm, I'm trying to like learn stuff now. Yeah, but not, that not mentally. But, you know. He reckons he's learnt more in the last three months than he ever has in the rest of his life reading a couple of science books I gave him. Well, that's impressive. We'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Um, well, I live in sort of central London, don't I? So it's <laughs> brilliant noisy. traffic and that. I yeah. think they were thinking more. More of, more of, of what, what fears have you got? What worries do you do? You, do, you, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry about it? Point. There's no point, is there? There's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the what the the little Chinese fellow across the road. Just 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 stuff that that I've got to sort out. You know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? That's <laughs> true. That I is true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on their shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't but worry about wars and stuff going on, because there's nothing I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was... What, here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> the Who? I mean, that's that's got to be one of the best rock tracks ever, hasn't it? Oh, there's no oh, arguing. Do I sound like Dr. Fox again? A little bit. Okay. That's a good <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to get a Sony award this oh. year. Carl, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Yeah? It's good to be back, isn't it? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit, what? Have we- Have we got Rockbusters? Well. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, new listeners. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> new listeners. Hold new on. listeners won't believe their luck when Hold they hear on. Rockbusters. We've got Rockbusters. Have we got- well, dare I say it, have we got monkey news, Carl? Uh, well, I've been away, haven't I? So, 
I've sort of got a few things that I've, I've read about roughly, yeah. but I don't know the full ins and outs. You're joking, because usually you do your research quite well, don't you, when you uh, get off on and over and read the top line. Uh, so what are you saying, though? Are you saying that there's, it's kind of monkey news? But we'll, we'll, we might have time to do something later. Well, we can, we've got to have him. I love it when he teases us with his monkey news. <laughs> we've had emails about that, that website address. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was, it was a, a, a what's the name? A underscore. An underscore. Okay, underscore, so, so give it out one more time. They'll go to this to find out about Carl Pilkington. Someone's putting a lot of effort. It's a really good website. There's some great pictures of Carl. It's, well, they're not great. They're just, uh, <laughs> freewebs.com slash the underscore K underscore man slash Okay, forward slashes all the all the way. Yeah, except yeah. the underscores. Except the underscores. Yeah, this is interminable. Isn't it interminable <laughs> giving out email addresses? I know. Yeah, Rub, it's so boring. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh dear. Is, mm -hmm. there, do, is he enjoying the show? Uh, it just says um, I love spending two hours on a Saturday listening about fingers up asses, doctors squeezing testicles, and making you cough. Uh, have you got any news on the airy Chinese kid? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, when when you say it like that, some of the stuff we cover does sound a little bit of uh, you know drivel. Well, sometimes yeah. Carl was worried. Carl was worried about swearing because we were talking about finger at arse and that. He's generally worried, and, and I, I don't have a problem with swearing. Although I understand why you can't say certain words on radio; it might be offensive. People aren't listening. I mean, you know, the f word, the c word, and all those. But when they bleep it out, when they bleep it out in a record, they bleep out the vowel. Mm. So in the f word, they bleep out the u. So it goes for beep, right? What? What? So they go. It's not offensive. I didn't hear the vowel. Presumably, yeah. So if you change the vowel, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So uh, in the C word, could I say, um, could I talk about the, the philosopher Immanuel Kant? Well, you can talk about Immanuel Kant because he's one of the great thinkers of, of all time. So Kant is not an offensive word because the vowel is oh, right. different, okay. is it? Leave it, leave it then. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean though? But I, I don't no, see but... how it can be offensive. You can't. It it's can't be. Really. Is is a thinker? He's a philosopher. Right. His name is his okay. name is Kant. That is his actual right. name. Yeah. I think it, it comes from a long line of. Kant's from what I can. He hasn't changed his name. I think his father, his grandfather. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, all they've got German people. Oh, well, Germany's. I assume full of Kant's. Well, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. What? Well, <laughs> what? What else? Were so you can change the vowel. So could I say? Um, could I say? Uh, uh, Probably not. Oh, what if I change two words? What if I said cump? C U M P. Now that's not offensive at all, is it? That can't be offensive. So I could say you fulking cump. Right. Yeah. Okay. What, I, well, I, uh, I need a schnit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Wonka, Willy right. Wonka. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Willy Wonka. Yeah, w yeah you got, although yeah. Willy, is Willy offensive? Could you say Willy? It's tricky. Willy, it's tricky. Willy Wonka and his, and, uh, Willy Wonka and his falcon right. cumps. Yeah. That would be fine, That would be it? absolutely fine. Is that alright then, Carl? Have you got any other questions or anything, Steve? <laughs> well, uh, I, I thought such a question, but it's something that I think might be of interest to you, Carl. Um, I was reading about this in the paper, and I know how fascinated you are by people of the Japanese persuasion. Um, two elderly men mm -hmm. found on a remote island are believed to be Japanese soldiers in hiding since 1945, desperate to go home. Diplomats from Tokyo are investigating the claims of these men, who are 87 and 83. What? <laughs> what? What are you thinking there? Well, no, go on. I know what you're thinking. Go on. Say what you're thinking. I'll be that old, though. Why? Why? Say why. I don't, I don't want to. Just leave it. Leave Carl's it got a theory. Well, I, I, th I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think that this is fine. It's, it's, I, I'd say that Carl's views don't reflect the views of XFM, mm. right? Carl's got a theory that Oriental people don't age well. Sure. Uh, let, uh, let Carl But, but that offer annoys that me the way, yeah, but I think what? people will probably agree with me, but for some reason, well, the first time I said that, I wasn't even worried about it, but now, because of the reaction of people, it, I don't understand. I don't know why I can't say that. What's Big your theory? Explain your theory, in a nutshell. Just that you don't see a, 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 a you know, sort of a 33-year-old Chinese person. <laughs> <either>. <laughs> No, but, but at the same time- you What know, do you mean you don't yeah, see but a 33 I'm not, I'm not having a go, at the same time, you don't <laughs> see that many fat ones either. So, in a way- that's that's good news. Nobody would be upset about that. But what do you mean? But your news isn't bad news because it's not true. But wait, stop, stop, stop. What do you mean you don't see a 33-year-old Chinese person? I don't understand. What do you mean you don't see them? What do you see then? Sort of, you know, young young ones, uh, and then like you don't see that middle ground. <laughs> This theory is based on. So you see old ones and you see uh, and you see yeah. young ones, but you never see any in between. Yeah. What do you mean? So what's the oldest, what's, okay, what's the oldest Chinese person you've seen before the age of 33? How old do you think 
Mm, about 22. 22. So you've seen lots of 22 year olds. So you've seen a range from babies to 22 year old uh, Chinese people. That's fact, okay? And then what gap do you miss out? What, 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 when, when do they pop back up on the radar for you? What age has a Chinese person got to be to be older than that? Well, 49. <laughs> <laughs> They're so specific. What, what do you mean? When you say they don't age well, what do you mean they don't age well? You think that, you mean that middle aged ones look old? Because you think at 23, when they're 23, we're, happy birthday to you. <laughs> And they look up and oh jeez, it's fifty two. What what do you mean? No, I just I just mean they don't age that well. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what it is in them, but they just don't oh, you all right then, here's here's the question. You tell me of a Chinese person on the telly who's about thirty two. Tell me of a Chinese person on the telly first. <laughs> G give us the great gamut of uh, Chinese talent um, currently on British TV, right? And I'll, and I'll, I'll pick and choose. Go on then. Bruce Lee. Hmm. How long has he been dead, Bruce Lee? Seventies, wasn't it? And not 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 really on the telly much, was he? Okay. What the what age was he when he died? Thirty-three, I think. Well, I would have <laughs> never guessed that. Well, what do you think? How old do you think he was? Probably about. 42. What, you know Burt Kwok? Yeah, he's old. Yeah. Do you remember the Pink Panther films? No. Okay. He wasn't that old in them, because it was 60s, 70s. But how old did he look, though? If, if, if he walked in and someone said, you never guess how old he is, what would you have said? <laughs> right then, there's my point then. There's my point. I have to say, I've been listening to you two talk, and I like the idea that there's people who've been waiting 18 months for some of this. <laughs> For the, for the Kant discussion, the, uh, Orientals. I, I, do you know what I think? I think, um, uh, Kant, uh, as a philosopher, um, is very popular in Essex. Because I hear him saying his name all the time oh, whenever I go now. through, what? They're all shouting this and that. <laughs> Kings of Lee on an XFM. Carl. Each of HD Merchant Carl Pilkington. Oh. Carl! Dead air! Talk! Yeah, I'm just- I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, it's but coming. that's no good on radio! You can't just look at something! You gotta talk! Is he even more backward than I remember? I don't know! It's just like someone's emailed in. Yeah, so He's, you gotta tell yeah, know, the, the know, listeners that! Now, I'm telling them now, I'm doing it! Someone's emailed in from Tokyo, mm. saying that he's getting married in a few months. Mm. To a Japanese woman, she's 27. <laughs> Just what an hour long I've got so she starts looking old. <laughs> well, how long do you reckon, according to your theory? Mm, about... Probably about four years. <laughs> about four years and that. So... <laughs> what would you advise him? To get out now, or...? Well... Have some good, sort of, wedding pictures done and that. <laughs> oh, God! God! It's not true! The theory's not true! Well, we'll see, we'll see, won't we? Oh yeah, oh yeah, great. In four years' time, he's gonna send a picture going, "Oh, you're right, Carl. Look, she looks like a prune." What? He's gonna suddenly start saying, "His girl." It's not true. It's not gonna happen. It's that thing, though, isn't it, of looking at her mum. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that, isn't there? That you shouldn't shouldn't really meet up with your girlfriend's sort of parents and that. Sure. Because no. you just sort of get a little taste of what's to come and what have you. Then what's to come with yours? Uh. It's a good job I didn't meet her early on. <laughs> no, no. You're gonna be in such trouble! No, they don't listen. It's all right. Really? Well, she Suzanne might. does, doesn't she? She'll probably be out. Really? But she, she knows. She's got some sense. <laughs> yeah, when you get back! Yeah. You went on holiday with them, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I've been, we've been on since then, haven't we? I don't think so. Yeah, I went on hol holiday last week, been away, but that was just me and Suzanne. Talk oh, about that it? later. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh that, that's coming up. Plus, of course, Rockbusters, the return of Rockbusters. Let's start Let's Rockbusters. rockbusters Let's now. do Rockbusters. Let's get it rolling, because we've got- I have got some amazing prizes. I went to the Americas, and I brought back gifts. Not your tobacco and your potatoes, but brilliant prizes. Now, quite seriously, these are not the usual tat. You will win some tat for Rockbusters, okay? We've got DVDs, uh, CDs, uh, uh, things like that, right? But the winner- of Rockbusters today, we'll go through to a chance to win the prizes in the, in week six. We're only here for six weeks, by the way. This is our first of six shows. Thank God for that. Yeah, and um, I got, I went to, I went to do The Simpsons uh, last weekend, and I've got um, a drawing here, an original drawing of Homer 
by Matt Groening. See that? Look at that. Uh, as Homer there, your pal Matt Groening, May the 18th, 2005. And Homer's saying, I love Carl because he's stupid like me. And that's going to be framed, original drawing. Uh, that is worth, a, I think, a lot, but I promised Matt Groening that it will not go on eBay. So please, I hope it goes to a fan. Um, I've also got a rare Spinal Tap poster. Uh, met with Christopher Guest, and he signed that, Nigel Tufnell. Um, so, uh, fans of Spinal Tap and The Simpsons, possibly the two greatest things ever, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, also, uh, my friend Rob, who did flannels with me, has drawn us three as flannels. There's Steve there, a little gog ranker. There's me there, a little bloke dumplant, and little Carl Pilverton, Pink Floyd numbskrunt. And these are all, these are going to be framed. So some very nice prizes. And I've got a little surprise for you. Obviously I met Homer. Um, press that little button there. Listen to this. Hi, this is Homer Simpson. I like Carl and it's perfectly round bald head. If you put three holes in it, it looks just like my bowling ball. Brilliant. Actual proof that you've uh, met the people themselves, that the prizes are bona fide and genuine. But don't enter this week's Rockbusters thinking you're going to win those prizes automatically. No. This week you've just won the usual tat. What is the but, tat, Steve? Well, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay. But you go forward for. to the big, uh, the big showdown, the big final competition in week six, where you get the chance to win those. All quite one person wins prizes. all those beautiful so just uh, everyone collectible goes prizes. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, the winners of each week go into the draw. What is Rockbusters, Carl? Uh, we've worked their appetite. I think play a record and maybe some wonderful adverts and then come back with Rockbusters. It's that kind of teasing that has made this a potential award-winning show. Bronze, I think, next yeah. year. Can we just swap that round and do ads and the song? Uh, whatever way suits you, mate. Go on. <laughs> XFM 104.9, <laughs> Magic Numbers, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, I'm a little bit worried. I've just got to warn the listener. If we suddenly just go off air, right? It's because champagne is pouring down a hole where there's loads of wires into the desk. Because Steve, yeah, getting Sorry ready to open this champagne, right, just took that wire thing off, just put it there. Of course, because it's warm, it just it exploded everywhere. Yeah, I should explain now. I didn't bring in champagne to toast our return <laughs> to the radio. I mean, I'm not an idiot, but um. Actually, uh, from Focus PR, Ashley has rather nicely sent us some uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, and I'm just trying some, and uh, it's really quite refreshing on this uh, summer's day. So if you're perhaps working for some kind of PR agency, you know, or any kind of company, and you want to send us stuff which you want us to shamelessly promote on air, then feel free to do that. Uh, so you're just, just looking for free stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, electrical goods. Um, oh, okay, it's not just like champagne definitely stuff. Definitely not. Because I was going to say, if other champagne companies, what's that champagne company called that they sent us That's free? Uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, which I imagine is available now. <laughs> yeah, so other champagne companies feeling jealous could send you some and you'd, you'd mention it. I don't want to exclude anyone from this. You know, anyone <laughs> is welcome to send anything in. Um, Brilliant. And I, as I say, I'm particularly interested in, in um, sort of designer goods. Okay. Um, you know, the Apple Mac people, they're welcome to sure. send anything in. Now, what's annoying about that champagne opening like that is that, as you know, I brought my camera in. Um, uh, and I wanted to film you opening that onto Carl's head. Got the cork. Rick, I've got another bottle. Have you ever- I don't want you to miss out on oh, an opportunity yeah. like that. That's a bit of a waste of champagne, that opening two bottles. But Carl, would you mind, cause, I, cause that would have made a cracking noise against your head, that cork going off. And uh, cause it's such a lovely, bald little sort of dome. Mm. Yeah. Um, put your head, we'll put your head right down, yeah? yeah? It'll open it, we'll see what the cork does and I'll film it oh. for, uh, like a website or something. Maybe like. we'll make that the finale of today's show. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, sponsored oh, by Linda yeah. Sparkling Water. Oh yeah, the sound, the sound of a <laughs> cracking cork against Carl's skull. Sponsored by Linda. <laughs> sponsored by Linda. Available now. <laughs> great. Right, we're doing Rockbusters then. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you, you should explain briefly what the concept is, Carl, because no, there might be a few new listeners. It's, block <laughs> it's Blockbusters. Right, go on then. Well, no. it's not, it's not Blockbusters. No, because they were real clues, that weren't would, they? Yeah, that was actually He says they're a cryptic clue, it's not cryptic. Yeah. Well, it's, what am I, it's like, what am I thinking? This competition is like, what number am I thinking of? Rick, just calm down for a second, let me explain basically what the concept is. You'll remember some of the greats from the past. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, you give some vague clue, is that right, Carl? And from that, we're Cryptic. supposed to deduct yeah. which band or artist you're thinking of. So yeah. for instance there was a Well there was one, the West Indian fella spinning a fish round his head and that was Detroit Spinners. The Trout Spinners. Yeah, Detroit, Detroit, spinners. Detroit, Detroit spinners. spinners. Yeah. yeah. There was also what happens if you fall over into a puddle in Texas, what? Wet Knee Houston. Wet yeah, knee that, that is the Houston. level 
of Carl's That's what you're cruise. working with. But could I just say, there's no irony in this. Carl doesn't think this is quirky or kitsch or ironic. This, he thinks these are- th he thinks these could go on the Guardian crossword. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. This so, is the best stuff you can come up with. Yeah. Right, so- so there's- there's three of them. Yeah. Right. I give you the cryptic clue yeah, not and to help you along. Well, it is, yeah, uh, and really. I give you some initials of the band or the artist or whatever to help you along as well. Yeah. Uh, three well, of them. Is, this is on the text only. We don't want emails on this one. Just it's eight. the one that gets the highest or the first one to get three. The first email with three or the first one that is the the highest. So if, if no one gets the third one, which I wouldn't blame you for, uh, so if there's like 30 people that get two, it's the first email that comes in that we pick and uh, they win a, a handful of tat, which, would you like to go through? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll search out the tat in a second, I'm not sure it is, yeah. There's some DVDs and stuff in there, it's not bad, yeah, but uh, it means you go forward to the grand final in six weeks time when you're playing for all that amazing stuff Ricky's got. We've got the signed, uh, genuine exclusive drawing of Homer Simpson done by Matt Groening, um, featuring references to Carl. We've got the signed mm. spinal tat poster, this is big yeah. stuff you can't get anywhere else. No, it's a rare, it's a rare um, American poster signed by and Nigel. It's such a shame that your only chance of winning it is with this inane quiz. Uh, absolutely, it's not. It's not down to skill or anything. Uh, it's. It's just such a shame that. Let's that just do it then. Go on then. Uh, right, the first one. Go on. Uh, what you got to remember is it's a band or an artist that so that X of them play as well. Right. Right then. So uh, the first one. Oh uh, yeah, because X of them play with Detroit Spinners <laughs> and Whitney Houston all the time, <laughs> yeah. don't they? All right, these three. Okay. Get away, but these are these are X of them bands. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you got, if you got like a, a ball. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I just, just, I know, the, you don't think about the cryptic clue is that every syllable counts. <laughs> he says it's different every time he <laughs> says it. it There'll be somewhere different. <laughs> look, he's, look, go on then. Go. Right. So if you get a bulb, right? A bulb? What? A bulb. A bulb. What's a bulb? What's a bulb? Like a. I like bulb. I like bulb. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I like bulb. So okay, you get yeah. a bulb. You get a bulb. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Right. Go on. So you get a bulb, right? Oh, yeah, a bulb, yeah. Have you got something in your throat? What are you doing? Are you eating a gobstopper? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna play a song then. No, come on! <laughs> get, get the clue out, for goodness Go sake! So the, the cryptic clue is, so, if you get a bulb, right? So... <laughs> that's the beginning. Okay, great. Right, oh. right, if you get a saw, then right, if you get a bulb, like, go on. And you look after it, right? You look after that bulb. Mm. And you teach it stuff. Jesus Christ. What are you doing there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is extraordinary. This that's is extraordinary. Amazing. Imagine that written down in the He's telegraph. He's had 18 months to get this right? Imagine it. That's not, that's not a clue. That's an essay. I don't, I don't want to, it's a conversation I don't with know yourself. Means a light bulb? A bulb like you plant in the garden? What kind of bulb does he mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Well, you get a bulb. Well, um, well, remember that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay, it doesn't no, matter it, what- it does, but I can't say too much. <laughs> Right, so listen, let me just do it again. You get a bulb, right? Yeah. When it's young, you look after that bulb, yeah. you teach it stuff and what have you. What have you done there? What, what's gone on? <laughs> Brilliant! And what so are the initials size? of the band? R. Right? R. R for rabbit, right? So what's the band there? Second right. one. Jesus. Uh, people have a problem doing this when they get home from, from like an, a night out drinking. Right? What, what's the problem they've got? Right? The, the initial there, K. What's the band? Right? People get in from having a night out, they'll have a problem doing this. What is it? What's, what's, what's the problem? Okay. okay. And clue right. number three? I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Right? That's, that's C. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. You had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah, and, and that's the band the C. C. Right? So three bands there. Three uh, cryptic clues. Not really. Text in 83XFM. Just, just send the three, uh, Three band names, that'll do, won't it? Can that'll they do fine. a website as well? If they want, they can email in. Well, tell them what it is. Yeah, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Right. send it in there. Give them again uh, quickly then, Carl. Right then, so get a bulb when it's young and that. Look Brilliant. After it. Different. Totally Look after different. It. Teach it stuff. Yeah. And all that. Okay. Ah. Ah. What's the band, right? Yeah. Second one. Mm. People have a problem doing this when they get home late at night. You mm. know, they've been out drinking and that. They get home. What, yeah. what problem are they going to yeah. have? Mm. K is the initial. Mm. Third. Third one, I had a vision of that Chinese flu. What do I mean? Mm. Brilliant. C, C is the initial. Player record. I mean, it's, it's abomination. Right, go. Embrace 
mm. glorious day on XFM 104.9. Rick, there may be listeners um, tuning in thinking they've got something better to do, for instance, switching off the radio and just staring blankly at the wall for uh, the next <laughs> half an hour, but yeah. no, because the, what they're going to miss is our grand finale oh, yeah. to this, which is, of course, um, sponsored by sponsored by Lindauer's, the uh, sparkling w sparkling wine solution to a hot summer's day, Yeah, uh, that we're going to be firing a cork. Did you just make that up? Yeah. It's pretty good. Please, yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> They're going to be firing a cork uh, at Carl's head uh, just for the sound. I, the sound I just think it's sound. Huh? It's not happening. Yes, it's it is. You it's said no, no. We've said it is now. We promised it to the listeners. Yeah, come on. I'm not happy with it. Why? Because the pain. Well, I, I've never had it done, so I don't know how painful it is. Well, we're going to do it then. Yeah, we've got to try it out, haven't you? It's you're perfectly. It's 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 like mm. a little like a little cowbell or yes. wood block. He said, <laughs> I, "That's what I'm hoping for." Yeah. I'm hoping for pop. Mm. Like, uh, and I'm gonna film it for my website. Brilliant. So go to that this week, um, uh, rickygervais.com and see Carl Pilkerton getting hit. Uh, a high-powered cork coming out of, um, uh, uh, Lindauer Sparkling Wine. <laughs> Lindauer Sparkling Wine. And of course, if you uh, want to send us anything in, and perhaps next week, that you feel we could, um, actually, that, maybe that'd that's That'd be great. That's the, that's the, to do this something is like interactive, because it's a lot amazing. of people plan the show, like Dr. Fox plans his show, we sort of come up, we riff on the, so we, that's a great idea. Send stuff in that we could harm Carl with. Yeah, we could Harm Carl. Harm Carl. We yeah. do a do a jingle. Harm Carl. I've and always wanted one on. of those George Foreman grills. I've oh, always wanted one of them. I know, but that's too uh, too well, much, isn't get, it? We could, what if we just pressed his head inside it? But, we'd, have to, we'd have to put it on. Put, no, just, put it on. See, yeah. see, yeah. Just squeeze oh, his head inside it. I've got to do that thing with a tea towel one day. You know that thing I did with a tea towel? You put a tea towel around his head, right? Tie it. I put a wooden spoon in, and you only have to turn it like a couple of inches, and it it kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it really is, yeah. yeah. So we'll be firing a cork at Carl's head. I'll be filming it for the web. Website. So that's coming That'd up be about, brilliant. Uh, about ten to three. Look forward to that. Yeah. Plus, oh, do you know what? I'm loving this. This is my. Oh, I just. Uh, oh, just being in a room with him. I just can't. I want to squeeze his head all well, the time. You, if you're a fan of um, imbeciles and idiots, yeah, you're missing out if you're not watching Celebrity Love Island. I, I watched about well, thirty seconds of it, and I hate them. Just, uh, just desperate uh, idiots and slappers. <laughs> I, I actually. Angers me. I, I I switched on Celebrity Love Island. The first thing I thought is, where's a tsunami when you need one? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but seriously, but there's a guy on there. There's a guy on there. Paul, De, I think his name's Paul Denan, ex of um, Hollyoaks, and he's an absolute joy because, like Carl, he's an absolute simpleton. Oh really? It's fantastic. And he was on one week, and he was talking about how he fancied lazy, Lady Isabella Harvey. Oh yeah. And he said to her, he said. Um, thing is, right, I really fancy her because, um, she don't like reading books and I don't like reading books. <laughs> I've got something in common! But I have the idea that, they, that he's attracted to someone for something they don't do. <laughs> I know, you know, yeah. I've never killed a kid. What, she's never killed a kid. What, never get what about sleep around? That yeah. would be a good thing to be attracted to someone for. Oh, well. just honestly, and Big Brother's the same. Is it? Just a load of ropey old cats. Um, uh, yeah, I know, just like a horrible, cellulited, wobbly, rice arsed fat titted tarts oh. and idiots. And show offs and are they? They're all they. They they all disgust me for a different reason. Mm. I don't know which one to hate <laughs> most, most and why. They 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 all give me a couple of reasons to hate That's them. That's what the nomination should be. Yeah, you know, nominate who do you hate the most? Because I absolutely. I you know I thought I was going to switch on and find that actually you know people like Abby Titmus and Rebecca Luz had been misrepresented by the press. Oh, what well, the one that wanked off a pig in public? <laughs> oh yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. Was that? Did you say wonked off? I said, said wonked off a, a pog. Yeah. Wonked off a pog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> great, isn't it? But I mean, so, so I, I said, she, uh, amazing, Rebecca. I mean, let's, let's, uh, don't even get me started on Abby Titmus. Don't well, even get me. There's, there, 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 don't. Uh, I like the idea of her uh, of her parents perhaps going to you know some kind of um, you know someone's birthday or whatever, meeting some old friends who've oh, yeah. been away living in another country. Yeah. How's young Abby? Is she still a nurse saving lives? No, she gets her tits out for a living now. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, oh, Rebecca Lou's um, by her own admission, I don't know if it's true, but by, but she said. She sleeps with a married man, then sold a story to Edwards, then wank wonked off a pog, <laughs> yeah. right? That's a hell of a CV, That's, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. That is amazing. Movie. I bet her Nan's very, very proud of her. Yeah. Uh, are they all. Are they, uh, oh, God. Don't. Just forget it. Don't get me started. I'll be watching every night for the oh, next yeah, 10 yeah, weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can't not. Is it, it, you, my adrenaline rushes, I and you, you get, oh God, I'll just tune in to see. You, uh, it's almost like you tune in to see which one gets hurt. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't Emotionally it? Emotionally scarred. But maybe one of them will come through. One, we'll find out. We're always going to be exactly. We're going to find out that one of them was like, re had a really, really bad child and we feel sorry for her for yeah. a little bit, you know. Like the Jade Goody syndrome or something. And yeah. oh, God. Yeah. Then they release an exercise video. 
Oh, Carl. We gotta get in you in on this. Oh, imagine Carl in Big Brother. That would be a joy. That would be amazing. But you turned on and you hated it, didn't you? Yeah, I gave it, like, three minutes and it's gone. Yeah. There's always something better on, though. You annoy me, like, you watch it. You may yeah. about it now, but you I watch know. it. I know, I, I know, yeah, I know. There's always something better I, I, I really did not watch any of Celebrity Love, and that was just too awful. I think celebrities are worse than, uh, um, general public, though, to me, because if they're so desperate, they want nine little bites of the cherry, and it's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Well, at least these people, you know, they, they think that they're gonna get out of their uh, job they don't like, maybe, or, you know, it, it's sort of like, I, I, you know, I give them their 15 minutes, but it's, oh, God. Oh. But, but there's always something, I mean, when we went, were out the other night, Steve, right, there's a program on about, uh, a spider that's a foot long and eats chicken. No <laughs> one's- <laughs> No one's talking about it. I don't know what to start! What do you mean? What do you mean? No, well, I, I just- I'm sorry! I had to stand up because I thought I was gonna explode! What do you mean there's a spider that's a foot when, long when and eats chicken? There was a program on about it, about yeah. how there's this spider in the jungle or something, but yeah. I missed it because it was out, but- no one's talking about that in the papers. <laughs> that's a me. That's that's a worry. <laughs> that's a bad worry. In case it nicks your Sunday roast. What do you mean? No, it well, no, but if it likes chicken, no, Rick. You yeah, know, yeah. in, in like two years' time, who knows what it might. I like. know. It move up the evolutionary ladder. No, it start liking Carl, then humans. Yeah, no, I'm not yeah. Yeah. about the chicken bit because I eat chicken. That isn't that shocking. But the fact it's a foot long, <laughs> and and no one's. It's just on on a Thursday night. No one's talking about it. <laughs> No! What do you expect from this? It's got its own PR. What do you want? What do you want this spider to be to be famous? What, what, where is it? Where is it? It's in the jungle. It's not worrying anyone then, is it? It's not gonna move. Well, why, it's not well, gonna- can, though. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not gonna move? Well, how is it gonna get here? Is it gonna get on a bus? There's waves and that, they come in bananas and all that. So, don't worry about it. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not- if you're gonna be like that. Anyway, listen, um, we better line up Babushka, we better play that surely, because I know you need to analyse those lyrics. Yeah. Um, that's very important to you, I know. We've still got that cork, uh, Oh, hitting. cork on their head's gonna be great. We're gonna put his little head down and really we'll give it a fire in. Sponsored by Linda Spark. Jess's Girl by Rick Springfield. And the reason I played that is twofold. One, it's one of the prizes we're giving away. It's an album called Rock Gods, and that's with a Z, right, and an umlaut over <laughs> the O. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got it's got Kiss, Judas Priest, Deep Blue, The Darkness. It's, I mean, it really is good. It's all it's all your classic um, rock tracks. The other reason I want to play it is because I like that song, and it's a great little up with bubblegum pop song, rock. You know, great. But it's got one of the worst lyrics in it. He's, uh, you know, he's worried about, um, bringing up the fact that he loves his girlfriend's, uh, his, his, uh, his, bo uh, mate's girlfriend. And he goes, I'll bring it up, he goes, uh, I, you know, I tell her that I love her, but, um, the point may be moot. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> we don't use that in a rock song. <laughs> the yeah. point may be moot. <laughs> well, I was listening to uh, yeah. Christian O'Connell on the breakfast show when he had this bounty hunter thing running a couple of weeks back, and um, I don't know what happened, but anyway, he ended up with Brian Adams in the studio doing a live session. Brian, you know, good nature, or whatever. Yeah. But you can't help but feel with Brian that he sort of he thinks that he's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. But there's something wrong. I mean, he's got the voice and the guitar, he can play and everything. But yeah. there was a lyric, and he, he he played it completely earnestly, and it was a session, and the lyric was something. It was from his recent album. And the lyric was along the lines of, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, um, uh, I, I'm sat in my hotel room, there's a knock at the door and I get kind of nervous. I'm hoping it's you, it's just room service. <laughs> Which is extraordinary, but Christian came up with the best. Uh, it came, they finished it, and obviously Christian was thinking, "What did I say?" And he came up with the best answer. If you've had a session that you're not entirely convinced by, he just said quite simply, "That sounded great." That's good. Which is amazing. That, yeah. Who are you complimenting there? The engineer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the sound recorders. Oh, what God. does that mean? That's great. That sounded great. Yeah, good. We got some good mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, Brian Adams. Is it true he bought the pub next door to him? And close it down because they were noisy. I hope so. Yeah, that's a good. That's what yeah, money's yeah, yeah. for. Oh, that exactly. is what money's for, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely right. Waking up the neighbours. That was his album, wasn't it? That, that was. Right. That, that's that, right. that was. I don't know if that was before or after that. Whether it was related or not. But if you but, buy a house next to a pub, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. So move, rather than ruining the fun for everyone. It's more good advice from Carl Pilkington. Carl, oh, while we're talking to you, we should give these answers to Rockbusters. It's the big quiz, um, and of course the winner this week goes forward to play in the grand final yeah. in six weeks time where they get to win all these amazing gifts. We signed, a signed Homer drawn um, especially oh, stuff, yeah. for, for Carl by Matt Groening, 
uh, Nigel Tufnell signed rare poster. Uh, they're, they're amazing. Should we give away a sort of, uh, maybe a, a, a original print, a behind the scenes of extras? We've got some amazing yeah, pictures filming stuff. extras. I was thinking the other day, you know, like, how excited I am to be with Carl and let off corks on his head. Well, our editor, long suffering editor, Nigel, we'd worked with Ben Stiller, Kate Winslet, Sam Jackson, all these people for eight weeks. It was amazing. But my highlight, I, I was that thought about it, and my highlight was dressing Nigel up, our editor, in a baby grow. Sure. It was, I planned it, but we got the, 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 um, department, um, uh, costume department hired it and we dressed up and it looked brilliant, didn't it? Yeah. And it's just, and it's- And that is BBC licence fee money <laughs> going towards you <laughs> dressing up your editor. Because you didn't pay for it. The BBC <laughs> paid for it, so that <laughs> is how your money has been spent, people. But, but, it's available on the DVD again. Exactly. Nothing's wasted. Which you have to buy for <laughs> 15 quid. <laughs> Sure. So, yeah, it's it's, a win -win it's like it's the whole thing is one big reality game show, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, so, the answer is give us the give us the go clue. on, give us the clue. I haven't got an give idea. Go on, give me the clue then again. Right. Well, do you want to say who the winner is or no? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hear the answer. Uh, first, first clue was uh, if you get a bulb when it's young, you yeah. look after it and that you teach it stuff. Yeah. What's going on there? Go yeah. on. The initial was R. Yeah. Right. That was that was razor light. All right. Raise a light, you raise a light. Raise yeah, light. okay. Kind of works. Yeah, Second it didn't matter one. what sort of bulb it was then. <laughs> it was very sure. Specific. Go uh, in mind, go on. People have a problem doing this when they get home from a night out drinking. Yeah. What's the problem they're having? They have a problem getting the key in. Getting the key in, that key in, key in, key in. That's the. That's awful. Words. That doesn't count. Words. Key in. Key right. in. It's keen. It's yeah, keen. It's one to. Right. Awful. Uh, awful, awful, one, awful, awful. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah. Uh, that, the initial I was C, that was Caesars. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. They managed to get that as well. Dream. I love the fact that even he knows they managed to get that as well. Did anyone get all three? Yeah, a few people. That's did. terrible. Okay, Caesars. who was the first one? Who was I the don't first? know what it says about XFM and its listeners that people are getting these answers, right? I know. Go on then. I mean, horrific. But anyway, we're going to give it, and he goes forward, as I say, for the big, pri the big prizes in uh, six weeks' time. It's Paul in Bookham. Where well done, well done, Paul Bookham. But also he does get um, the uh, complete series of uh, Alias, League of Gentlemen, that Rock Gods album. Um, so you know it's, it's, it's pretty good. But Open Water on DVD and a chance to win all those prizes. Brilliant. Yeah. Coming up next, a court smacking a bald man mm. on the bumps mm. really hard. London, it's your city. XFM 104.9 playing Green Day. Uh, the studio's falling apart. I know, his microphone broke. I'm broke. You, Rick, I don't know why uh, Lindauer's, the sparkling wine, <laughs> want to be associated with this shambles of a show. It is falling apart. This is awful, this studio. It's got to be fixed. Right? Right now, Carl, come on, dear. It's the time where I'm going to. Let a cork off. Do you want to film this, Steve? Yeah, the that'll be available on the website next week, com. So see Carl getting hit. One bloke suggested we leave the metal cap on because it's get a better pitch. Mm -hmm. But we take the. He's <laughs> taking. Let's get the right. camera ready. Get the camera ready. Ready. So if you just joined us, um, we are mm. using some Lindauer's sparkling wine <laughs> to basically. Well, what can I say? We fire a cork at Carl's round right, ready? head. Ready? Hang, on, hang on a sec, let me just put the headphones on. Right, film this then. Okay. He's in position, look. Just firing right. up. Okay, Carl, Carl, come on there so we can see your head a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... it... Oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! No! <laughs> It's like, it's like jackass. <laughs> did it hurt? You me. What do you mean, did it hit you? I sort of just... I... It, I went off, it went off course, did it? Just glanced at it. Right, Lynn Darris, you're going to send us um, eight more bottles, please. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get this right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Homesick. Kings of Convenience. Beautiful. Yeah, on XFM 104.9. Sure. Well, that's nearly the end of our first of six shows, I'm our just summertime back to special. Some of, the, some of the highlights, Rick, so far today. I don't know what you've made of it. We, we Finger up the arse. Finger up the arse. Testicles early on. Uh, um, or we don't age very well. Bit of, cant, bit of racism. Bit of racism with the uh, Germany's full of cants. Yeah, that, that was a That isn't like. swearing. Um, um, cork, cork on the air, champagne down the electrical <laughs> works. Sockets. So yeah. good. Just uh, the, the finale is uh, it's monkey news, obviously. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, yeah. Uh, 
There isn't. Uh, I've been away, haven't I? Oh. Right, there's been no monkey news. You can't get. No, no, but I haven't had, had a proper chance to sort of, you know. Uh, Carl, your monkey news is of spurious tales from the 17th century sometimes. <laughs> so let's have one of those. No, let's have a so monkey that, who dressed as Zorro and they thought he was uh, a woodsman, but when they took his head off, he was only he was a four foot hairy chimp. <laughs> let's have one of those ridiculous stories. Well, we've we've done that though. But uh, do you want to go back on some of the ones? Oh, for sort of just what tonight? is the monkey one? news? There must have been some monkey news this right. week. The only thing that sort of stood out, do you know, like they're having problems. You're just making this up. Where's not... your information? Where's the piece of paper? Where's the document? What is this? Because I've been away, so I haven't got anything. Right, let's let's just hit, let's, 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 but let's it's hear bad it enough out. when he's reading it, he gets it wrong. When he's just riffing, it's going to be absolute twaddle. Let's hear it out. Right? Do you know, like they're having problems getting new new um, people to be policemen? Oh, for... go on. They've uh, in America. They're taking them on to, uh, sort of join the SWAT team. <laughs> They've taken what on? Some little monkeys. Okay. Uh, giving them walkie-talkies and all that. And, uh... Well, they can't talk. <laughs> They're just walkies. <laughs> yeah, giving them some walkies. What do you no, mean? What, what was... being given commands and that. And, uh, they go Well, so it's one way. They, they tell them. They've got the little things well, strapped to them. They're good at, like... Getting into small, sort of, you know, small places and that, and sort of, you know, cracking stuff and all that. Like I say, it's just half a story I just picked up on. That's not a story. Well, what do you want? Monkey news. Well, I'll, I'll get some better stuff next week, but I've literally like got off a plane. This is the ago. worst. Uh, this is one of the worst shows we've ever done. And that's saying something, Rick. This is- We've done some tripe. <laughs> this is nothing. And to end with the- the police in America have given monkeys walkie-talkies, that's nothing. That is a disgrace. And what do you mean that you've not had enough time to prepare? We've been off air for 18 months. Yeah. yeah what, there's been no accumulated monkey news in that time? It's gotta keep it fresh though, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Great, well, what-